Hey everybody, this is Rich Straffolino with Gestalt IT here for another great unboxing. We have something very exciting today here from HPE. They have a brand new micro server out. It's their generation 10. This is the model ML110, I believe. Uh, it's a pretty full featured kind of mini server in a box. Um, mini for, you know, a server. It's still, uh, as you can see, uh, a big box, if nothing else. Uh, I believe I know what the form factor is, but we're gonna take a look as soon as we get it out of the box. So why don't we do that right now? We have our knife here already set up uh, and uh, we're gonna see it. Uh, there was um, some damage. I don't know if we can see this on the video here from United uh, Parcel Service, appreciate that. But it looks like great packaging on the part of HP. So I think we're gonna be okay. Like I said, this is the generation 10 micro server. So in a long lineage, for HP, now HPE. Uh, this is though distinct from anything on the, you know, the, obviously their consumer company is completely unrelated to this. Um, and so lots of good stuff. So we have some documentation, warranty information here. Don't know why it needs to be in a plastic bag. So that's all good. Uh, let's open this up here. You can see lots of uh, nice foam, very, very secure. Okay, more of that goodness. And let's see if we can get this guy off here. All right. Ooh, here we go. All right. I guess uh, we'll just pick this guy up here. Doesn't look like there's all that much in the box other than the micro server. I know, the moment of truth. I don't mean to tease or anything. So this is the HPE ProLiant Micro Server ML110 Generation 10, and uh, it's a fun one. Uh, it's pretty well loaded. Let's, uh, let's open the box here. There appears to be a pull tab on the bottom, so, or not, just a piece of tape. So we'll just use the knife and open up the bag here. So it's a pretty standard ATX looking configuration here. It's not, wouldn't be too unfamiliar if you're used to building PCs or just have a desktop sitting uh, under your desk. Um, but if we look around the back here, I think we'll be able to see that it, uh, you know, has some very server-like configuration here. Um, so we have just a uh, VGA for video out, uh, not really a concern, obviously, with a server. Uh, we have uh, dual ethernet uh, on the back here. We have their, uh, um, their remote configuration diagnostic of their ILO port. Uh, four USB, I believe, uh, USB 3 uh, ports on the back there. Um, but, you know, not, uh, not a lot for IO on the box, at least on the back end here. Uh, what becomes interesting is a couple of things. One, if we take this guy off here. I'm pretty sure this just pops off. If I can get it, figure it out. Maybe we'll do that a little later. But anyway, behind here, uh, you can actually access uh, some front accessible uh, hard drive slots. Uh, they're not hot swappable from what I believe, but it will support up to eight drives, uh, whether uh, SAS, SATA, uh, that kind of stuff. And uh, really has a lot of room for memory expansion. We have a couple of drives from HP that we're gonna put in here when we start doing our testing. Uh, so should be very exciting. Uh, the other thing I wanna do is uh, open it up. Um, so see here it just uses uh, thumb screws to open it up again very DIY kind of PC uh, approach there appreciate that um, pretty typical thumb screw there okay so if we can look in here uh, it's not fully uh, kitted out or anything like that it does uh, it's, it's ready to go out of the box I should say um, but there's plenty of room for expansion as well um, underneath this uh, beautiful uh, heatsink uh, right here. We have a Intel Xeon uh, Silver processor. It's a 4110 uh, processor. So you get eight cores there, 16 threads, 11 megabytes of L3 cache, and I think it operates at 2.1 gigahertz. I can turbo up uh, to about 3536 three, or something like that. So so pretty powerful there. Uh, there are a total of six uh, uh, memory DIMM slots. Uh, right now, only one's populated, although it does have uh, 16. Uh, gigabyte dim in there, so a lot of, uh, or a pretty decent amount of memory for, you know, a single dim. I think it can do up to 192 
uh, gigabytes, theoretically. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not going to be putting in that much memory into this, uh, but that's because I don't want to pay that much for a memory. Uh, so there we go. Um, and you can see here there aren't uh, any drive bays uh, that are readily accessible from the front. That's because they want you to just go along the back here. So I think this is the release maybe for the front. Maybe that's going to do something. You know what? I cannot figure out how to do that, and I feel like a fool. Anyway, there are hard drive slots in the front here, because I can't figure that out. There's also a slimline, uh, or at least a slot for a slimline, uh, Optical drive, um, I don't think most organizations are really going to use that. Maybe useful. I do think it's very funny that it uh, is slimline. They can't put a full-size one in there because this is not exactly a, a svelte box. They do. Uh, HP does make like a, a, a little half-height one of these. It looks like a shuttle PC or something like that. Um, but I think this is... Uh, you know, something for uh, SMB that's going to need, you know, some basic uh, file serving capabilities, maybe run an email server on here, um, do some basic virtualization and stuff like that. This is a really compact package. Uh, I think it starts at just over $1,000 for base configurations. I'm not sure what this one retails for, but as you can see, uh, you know, out of the box, a uh, very powerful processor, a uh, lot of room for memory expansion, up to eight drives in here if I could ever get that off. Um, and uh, yeah, so I, I think uh, certainly compelling for, a, uh, for an SMB. And the other thing here is because of the measurements of this, this can actually uh, be rack mounted um, in a four and a half U uh, configuration. And that's part of the other benefit of having the drives uh, in the front there that you could access those. If you decide to slap it in a rack, uh, it all fits to spec um, other than being the four and a half U, which is just kind of odd, uh, but uh, that's only so much you can do there. Uh, other than that, uh, yeah, that's the uh, HPE micro server. Uh, I think maybe we'll do a little companion, maybe showing a little bit more up close of the motherboard itself. And uh, yeah, so let's take a look. So this is a look inside the HPE micro server, ML110. Lots of uh, ports here. You can see there are quite a few uh, PCI ports. Uh, these are PCI 3 ports, and I believe it supports up to four of those going. Uh, I don't believe they're at uh, full 16 lanes. Uh, we'll have the stats on that, but I'm pretty sure they're at least uh, uh, going to be eight or four lanes uh, per, so that'll give you plenty for additional I.O. They also say it can support uh, a double height and a single height uh, graphics accelerator, so if you're doing any kind of analytics or uh, you know other things that need graphical acceleration, uh, there is a pretty decent amount of room, again, for something that fits into a pretty standard ATX package. Uh, it's pretty nice. Uh, you can see here there are the three dim memory dim slots on either side there. The one is populated with a fully loaded uh, uh, memory dim right there. Big beautiful heatsink. Notably, there's not a fan on there, and again, I think that's why you're going to want those air baffles on there to make sure that airflow kind of keeps going through there. It's an 85 watt Xeon, um, which is pretty remarkable for eight cores. The other thing I wanted to just point out really quick here as well, uh, there's the ASIC that runs their ILO config and, and security stuff uh, on here. Uh, just there, that's generation five, I believe, for that. Uh, but the other thing here is there is a uh, micro SD card slot. Um, I didn't look into what it's for, but it is weird to see a micro SD card slot. I'm assuming it's for configuration or security operating system. Sure, why not? 